Hello everyone, it is October 11th and this is our weekly Team Southern Strong Call. Before we go into the meat of our call, which is sharing your story, just kind of wanted to go over with everyone a mental game plan for the next three months. If you are a newer coach and have not been through the holiday season, then it is definitely an important time to have a mental game plan and be prepared for Kind of the slower season of the year. October, November, December are probably three of the slowest months of the entire year because, you know, people are busy. They have things going on. They, they're, they're not thinking as much about their health and fitness and nutrition because it's that time of year where people want to put on the baggy sweaters and the sweatpants and they're not thinking about how they look and the clothes that they, they, they're wearing. They're, they're not in bikini mindset like we get in January and throughout the rest of the year. So I think it's so important that we all have a mental game plan. I have heard from some people on our team and the bigger team from um, Team Shine United, I'm just talking to people, and I've heard a lot of people already having a little doubt about if they're going to hit Success Club. Well, guys, it is the 11th of October, and if you're already having doubts and if you've already said, well, I'm probably not going to hit Success Club this month, let me tell you, you're right. You're not because you've already decided that you're not going to. You've already made up your mind that that's not something that's going to happen for you. And you've basically thrown in the towel. I know that's a little bit of tough love there, but it's true. The next three months of our business, it's all, a, in my opinion, a complete mental game. If you have decide right now that you're going to hit Success Club every month for the next three months and was so on and so forth, you're going to make it happen. But if you've already said, well, it's probably not going to happen for me, it's not. The universe is going to work against you and the people aren't going to come to you and they're going to feed off of your energy that you're sending in your messages and it's just not going to happen. So right now, I want you to change your mindset and change the energy that you're pushing out. Decide that this is what you're going to do, that you are going to hit success. You're going to find those three people to help every single month from now until you are no longer a coach. And that's what I've decided. I'm struggling. I'm, I, I'm, it's the 11th and I'm sitting at two. It's been a while since that's happened for me and I'm having conversations every day, but I'm getting a lot of rejections. I'm getting a lot of no's. I'm getting a lot of not right now's, but that's every day that I'm having more conversations with people that I'm adding value to people's lives and I'm not ready to throw in the towel. So have 20 days left in this month and I'm determined to find two more people that I can share this gift of Beachbody with in those 20 days. Um, so what do we do to get there? What do we do to find those extra people? What I want you to do is to really dig in deep to your professional development. More so than ever, this is how you're gonna change your mindset. This is how you're going to take charge of your, um, of what you're doing, the energy that you're putting, Pushing off, and if you don't know of a good one to read right now, um, this is a perfect time to pull out your badass by Jen Sandro. And um, it's one of those great books that reaffirms that you can do this, that you are awesome, that you have the gift, and that people are lucky to get to spend time with you and have you as their coach. If you're just hopping on, if you don't mind meeting yourself, we're getting a little bit of a back noise. I appreciate it. Also, keep in mind that life is going to happen. This is the time of year when kids get sick, when we have school performances in the evening. There's holiday parties. There's um, regular parties. Your may get sick. I know last week I was, I was not feeling good because, you know, as a teacher, I come home with those germs and they just hit me every once in a while. This is when you, it's very vital that you set those business hours, that no matter what is going on in your life, you know that you're going to set aside that hour a day, maybe not a consecutive hour, but an hour throughout the day to work your business. You've, you're making that a priority, no matter what's going on. So that's going to help these last three months of the year as well. And going back to basics, 
cutting out all the extra fluff, the extra trainings, the extra groups until you hit Success Club. Now, once you've hit it, yes, of course, go and do and take part and learn as much as you can. But until that happens, go back to your basics, which means start a program, complete a program, share that program, be the and excellent product of the product. Um, expand your market with free groups. I wouldn't really encourage the free groups until after you hit Success Club, but it's a great way to expand your market and really turn that cold market into your warm market. Um, but if you're going to do that, I really encourage you not to do a um, just a copy and paste group. I know that there are groups out there where you can go and get free scripts, but if you're just copying and pasting, you're not really showing your value as a coach, that's not really, it's not worth your time or your energy. Uh, you know, I, I had the thought of with free groups to either go big or go home because I want the people that don't know me who have never met Alden Johnson, don't know me from Gulfport, Mississippi or Southern Miss in Hattiesburg that, you know, I'm just this random fitness coach that they've met online, another MLM person just wanting to make a sale. I want them to see that I'm more than that, that I'm someone who truly cares about wanting to help them and to make them fitter and healthier. So like I said, go big or go home. Um, this is a great time of year to go for no. I am quickly filling up my go for no sheet. And you know, it's one of, if you've never done a go for no sheet before, it's when you have a hundred little boxes and you are trying to fill those up with people to tell you no. And I know that seems a little backwards and a little, you know, not something that you necessarily would normally want to go for. But when you change your mindset, it's actually turning into being a lot of fun. Um, it's something I'm definitely, I'm doing this month and I've gotten mine probably a quarter of the way filled. And the way that I think about it is it's not that I'm having all of this rejection right now. It's that I'm laying the seed works with their seeds for those people. So maybe they're telling me no right now, but that's 25 to 30 people that have already told me no this month that I'm going to be able to follow up with the next month and the next month and the next month until the time is right for them. And um, this last part of the year is also very, you know, it's, it's, I feel like more so than ever, it's important to have a success partner. Have that person that will build you up and that you can go to and say, I'm really struggling this week, talk me off the ledge. Or hey, I'm not getting as much traction on my post as I used to. Do you mind going to look at my page and telling me where I need to make adjustments? What, what can I do more of? What, can, what do I need to kind of stay away from? Am I not, what am I not showing enough of? And um, I know in the past, my success partner has been vital for me for when I'm really struggling with my business to give me that little extra pet to remind me that of why I'm doing this and, you know, what, what, I have done and how many people I've helped and why I need to keep going. So if you do not have a success partner and would like to be matched up for with one, you know, you can either post in this page. I know that there's people in Team Shine United that are looking for success partners and I know it sounds a little weird, but it's kind of like dating a little bit. You just want to get on there and post like, hey, I'm Alden Johnson. I am a full-time elementary school librarian. I have two little boys. I live in Gulfport, Mississippi. This is where I'm a diamond coach right now. My business, I'm here on the leadership ladder. And you just want to find someone who is kind of at the similar point as you in your business. So that's all about um making a game plan for the last three months of the year. Guys, I promise if you change your mindset right now and decide that you're going to make this happen and, you know, cut the excuses. And I know I've already, I'm already making plans to dedicate time to my business to make this happen because sex success club is a non negotiable for me. I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Even if I am up until midnight on the last day of the month, I'm going to make it happen because I know that's what, pushes my business forward. So if you're, if you change your, your mentality right now, that this is something that you're going to do, it's going to happen. People are going to feel your energy through your posts. They're going to feel your, they're, they're going to be drawn to you because you're a positive person that you're not just out there for the sale. You're out there for, to help them. So enough about the game plan for the last few months. Let's go into the bulk of our call. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And Pull up our slides. There it goes. Okay. 
I actually did the same topic a few months ago for a Legacy United call, but I've thought about a lot of it and wanted to go back and share it with y'all. Um, I can get it up. Sorry. Because sharing my story is something that I really struggled with probably the first eight months of my business. Now, keep in mind, I've only been a coach for a year and a half, not even a year and a half. So for the longest time, it's something that I felt like I was just kind of shooting in the dark with, that I was just getting up. I was posting my three, three to five times a day, crossing it off my to-do list and moving on. I really didn't think too much about who I was posting for or who um, I was trying to attract. Honestly, I felt like I was kind of at a disadvantage because when I first signed up as a coach, there were, I, I just remember like, you know, month one getting on these calls and hearing of these successful coaches and they all had, and I know this sounds kind of bad, they all had some kind of tragedy or hardship in their life. You know, um, the people that I think of off the top of my head are Katie Ursa, who had suffered, who had survived cancer, or Val Baldo, who um, her husband had was currently deployed at the time. And here I was, just Alvin Johnson, kind of, uh, you know, just kind of floating through life. I got my degree, came home early, got married, had two healthy children. I didn't really feel like I had any value to share. I didn't have anything to share. I had just a boring life, just a, you know, a stereotypical life where, you know, the girl from Gulfport, Mississippi goes to college, come back, comes back, marries a guy from Gulfport, Mississippi, and lives here the rest of my life working in Gulfport School District. Like, I mean, that is the stereotypical Gulfport girl story. And I just didn't feel like I had anything that would inspire anyone. But then over time, I began to realize that what my story was is that I was the stereotypical girl from Gulfport who came back, married a guy from Gulfport, had two children, and was floating through life. That was my story, and it was up to me to share to all of these other people out in my community that you can be healthy regardless of where you are after two kids, loving to eat, you know, um, living in the just the regular life, that you didn't have to have a major thing happen to want you to get to start your healthy lifestyle. And I've been able to do that because I have learned how to share my story. And that's what we're going to talk about. The pictures that I have on the um, thing is just a little bit of some of the posts that I've used to show my everyday life and just share my story and my transformations. So what is your story? I did a lot of research on this when I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to get a little bit better at attraction marketing. And some of the things that they talked about were sharing your struggles. And for me, that my struggles were, I, I have, I'm, you know, now realizing that I'm addicted to eating. I'm still addicted to food. I am constantly thinking about when my next meal is. I get like anxious if I don't know when I'm going to be eating next. Like I do. I, my husband makes fun of me all the time because while we're eating, I'm thinking about my next meal. I'm thinking about my next snack. And um, I don't talk about it too much yet because I'm still looking. I still want to learn a little bit more about food addiction, but I'm, I'm there. I know I'm there. And that's a struggle that I know other people have to do, deal with, like being addicted to sugar and um, overcoming that and regardless of what your struggles are you have to be brave and share the obstacles that you have overcome I am currently overcoming that with the clean eating and slowly but surely a year and a half later I'm still struggling with it but that's something that I can share also the struggles of being a mom and working full-time and being able to find that time to work out it's hard even, you know, I, if for me, I have to get up at four in the morning, but I, I make it happen and I am proof that they can make it happen as well. Talking about how did Beachbody come into your life? How did you make the transformation from the old you to the new you? One thing that um, I like to think about in my post, and I know I've talked to most of you about this, is when you're writing your post, I want you should be talking to the person that you were 
the person that you currently are and the person that you will be. That's three different people that you can attract by talking about how Beachbody came into your life, how you're making those transformations. And then of course, talk about your results or the results you're about to get. Um, I see a lot of coaches bread coming out, like when they're starting a new program, I can feel the excitement from some of those posts when they say, you know, I cannot wait to show you my results at the end of these 21 days, or I can, I, you know, this is what I'm working toward. Um, around the summer, there were a lot of coaches that would hang up their, bikini, their bikinis and say, you know, I, this is my goal. This is what I'm going to be able to do. And, you know, I'm not a big bikini person. I still don't wear them too very often. So got the mom bod, but, um, you could feel people being attracted to that because they wanted to pay attention to those results. They knew that at the end, they wanted to see if they were able to get in that bikini or not. So that's a way to share your story. Write your, on a, your audience. Know who you are talking to. Um, I, I try really hard to target my niche. And for me, my niche is busy moms who like to eat, period like six words. I know that that's who I'm targeting. I'm not just throwing darts hoping that I'll get whoever I, whoever I'll get. I have my, my focus and my lasers pointed on those people. And that's what I talk about in my post. I talk about being a mom who likes to eat and who likes to eat good food. So I share a lot of recipes. I share um, tips about meal planning and stuff. Not so much on my pages as I need to, um, but definitely in my challenge groups, that's what I talk about. Be you, be authentic, be yourself, be who, um, be, don't try to be the coach that you compare yourself to. I have a really bad habit of this. I've actually talked to Haley Cottrell a lot about it because, you know, sometimes I'll look at my upline coaches post and be like, man, she's good. Why, why did I not think to word it that way? Or why did I not think to write a post about that? And I get down on myself. But then when I look at it, I don't talk the same way that my upline coach talks. I don't think the way the same way that my upline coach talks. Because we're in different places in our life. And if I try to do my post the way that she does her post, it wouldn't be me. And it wouldn't attract my tribe. I want, you know, you've heard the saying, your, tribe, your vibe attracts your tribe. I wouldn't be attracting those people. I would be attracting people that would be better on her team and would get better results with working for her. And then, of course, you want to brand yourself. I am um, currently talking to a graphic designer. I'm about to change up my like page from being just Alden Johnson Health and, or Fitness and Nutrition to I'm going to be the hungry mom um, gets fit after babies or something like that. I, we're still working on the names and everything. But I'm going to brand myself, and that's what I'm hoping to attract people. And if you're not really sure about a good brand for yourself, this website at the bottom, you can take a little quiz, and it's going to give you a profile. It's going to give you colors. Like um, for the profile, mine was the um, warrior or the champion or something like that, where I use words that – can um, uplift people that when I answered the questions of the quiz, those, they gave me key words to use in my post that would attract my audience. It will give you colors. It will give you uh, fonts that are best for you. It just kind of breaks it down, and it's also it's kind of fun to do. It's kind of fun to do. Um, so write your story. Use your page as your reality show. I show a lot about my boys. I bring them into my um, – coaching posts and my challenge group posts because again that's who I'm trying to recruit or attract I'm trying to attract moms just like me so I think of my pages as like the real housewives of Southport or keeping up with the Johnsons um, because I want to show them how health and fitness can fit into their life as well because remember I'm just your average normal mom I'm not anybody special I'm not anybody doing anything that the lady next door couldn't do as well. And what part of your days would you like to be in this week's episode? So I, I try, I, this is, you know, as a busy mom, I'm going to be perfectly honest. This is something that I don't do very well. I try to sit down and pre-plan my post for the day. That doesn't always happen, but I, you know, I feel like I, um, when I do that, my posts have more value and they're not so like just kind of ran together. I know that 
we um, kind of get lost in our posts sometimes. I know I do, where I'll go back and I'll evaluate my page every once in a while and I'll look at it and I'll just be like, what was I even talking about? No wonder that didn't get many likes. I wouldn't have read it either. That picture was not eye-catching. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't show anything about who I am. It's just there. I literally just crossed that off my to-do list and did not add any value to that. So um, that's just something to think about. Post like you're talking to a friend. When I write my post, I have someone in mind. Like tonight, my post was dedicated to a girl that I've been talking to. We talked a year ago, we talked six months ago, and we talked again today. And um, she always wants information about a talent group, and every single time that I give her a price, she just quit responding. And so my post tonight, she, she's a single mom. And I talked about how, you know, I'm really, my health journey started with my kids and they're my inspiration for it. And, you know, you can't put value on being healthy for your family. That was my, my post. And I had her in mind. I was talking directly to her. That's a good way about um, overcoming objections. Write your post like you're, you're talking to that person. If you could say, if you were talking to that person face to face and it, if it wasn't over Facebook message and they gave you an objection, how would you respond? If you could say what you wanted to say to that person, what would you say? And put it in a post. Because it's a whole lot easier to say something in a post that hundreds of people are going to see than singling a person out and saying it just to them. You can be 100% honest. You can say what you want and say what you feel, and it's not going to offend anybody. And that's really kind of kind of nice. Um, talk to the person you were, and we mentioned this before, I mentioned this earlier, talk to the person you were before Beachbody, the person you are currently because of Beachbody, and the person you will be one day thanks to Beachbody. And of course, you know, we don't want our whole page to be fitness and nutrition, fitness and nutrition. Want to show bits and pieces of your life and really do show who you are. Um, when you're writing your story, give breadcrumbs. I think we talk a lot about breadcrumbing, but we don't really explain it. Breadcrumbing is giving your stories in paragraphs, not chapters. Ask, how can I relate this to my program, personal development, challenge groups, and coaching? This is a tip I actually got from Jamie Guthrie. Jen shared it with me, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is just absolutely brilliant. And, you know, I, I have gotten away from this as well. I, You know, these calls aren't me talking to you is, is kind of a refresher for me as well. Coming back to this, I realized that this is something I need to get better about. I, you know, even the littlest things can be tied into coaching. Talking about, um, I, an example, tonight I had dinner with um, one of my really good friends and we were talking about vacuums because we're old and that's what exciting people talk about are their vacuums. And, um, you know, I was telling her I just gotten this new shark and I absolutely loved it. And I could not, um, I don't, I don't even know why it took me so long to buy one. I have been talking about getting a shark for like a, a year and a half. And I've been walking around with my cheap, uh, dirt devil who hadn't worked like a, for a crap and six months, but I, you know, I just couldn't go and get one. And she said, you know what? It was because you thought it was too expensive. And then it clicked with me. You know, that would be a good post. I felt the same way about my Beachbody program, my 21 day fix. It took me a while to purchase my 21 day fix because I thought it was too expensive. And then here it is, was like my vacuum, the best thing that I've bought in who knows how long. So in the few, you know, look in the next few days, I think about rewarding, but I'm probably going to be doing a vacuum. Post. <laughs> but you know, just little things like that in your life, you can connect it to your program, your personal development, challenge groups, et cetera. Um, Bonnie Engel does a really good job about doing this. Jen Guthrie does a really good job of doing this. I'm trying to think who else is pretty spot on. Um, those are the two that come to my mind about breadcrumbing and just bringing in their everyday life into, and then, you know, tying it in to their personal, to, you know, their, their, their business. Um, before you post your post, this is something that I tried to do. I always think, or I'll ask Michael, I'll give it the who cares test. And this is basically just asking like, 
does this add any value to their life? Am I just posting to post or am I making a point? Am I advertising? Am I giving value? Am I being a product of the product? Am I shining light into the world by posting this or am I literally just crossing it off my to-do list? Who cares if, you know, what I'm eating? if I'm not giving a recipe or who cares what my workout is, if I'm not adding a little motivation to that. Um, with the pictures, would I stop scrolling if I saw this image? Would I stop and say, what is she doing? I wanna know more about that or would I just keep scrolling? I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere that we literally only have, I think 2.5 seconds to catch someone's attention when they're on social media. That is 2.5 seconds that I have to catch their attention, have a picture or something, the first word, that will catch their attention enough that they will stop their scroll and will read and try to take my content. If I'm posting the same Shakeology picture every single day, people are gonna stop scrolling. They're going to stop reading what I have to say. I may have the very best post that is ever written in the entire world, but if I don't have something to catch their attention in that 2.5 seconds, I've lost them and there it goes. Um, I see a lot of coaches, we kind of get stuck in the rut because it's easy and because it's quick of doing, again, the same pictures every day. And I... I, there's somewhere, I'll have to find it, I'll post it on our team page, but there's a calendar where it, it tells you what to do, it tells you what to post or what image to make. And um, so before you post, would you stop scrolling for this image? Also, you want your pictures to be clear and light. Um, on my Photify, kind of starting to per, stop using filters, using just regular original photo and brightening them a little bit. And I'm finding that that makes my pictures a whole lot clearer. They're not as grainy and um, I, I think they look better. They, they look more professional and I, I would stop and look at them more than just your average kind of blurry filtered picture. Um, would you like, love, comment on this if someone else posted it? Now, this one's a hard one because it's, you know, we kind of have to get out of our head a little bit and think about that. And would we go and post this? Would we, or would we go and like this if someone else did it? And like I said, it's, that's kind of hard to do because... You wrote it. Of course it's great. Of course you would go like it. But I know that I go back and look at mine. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. Not only would I not stop scrolling for this one, I would not like it. So, um, you know, we, we have to pay attention to that as well. And pay attention to what works on your page. Right now, um, my traction is very low, and I'm work that's something I'm working on. But I try to have a minimum of 20 likes for each Posts. If I have 20 likes, I know that it's a pretty decent post. I, you know, obviously, I want more than that because the more um, likes I have, the more traction I'm going to get, the more news feeds that my post is going to appear on. But 20 likes, I feel like it's pretty, pretty stable for where I am in my business. It started out as 10. If I had 10 likes, then I knew it was a good post because that was 10 people out there that stopped and cared and liked what I, I had to say, which is, you know, anything less than that, I would notice that I probably didn't need to talk about that anymore. If you're not getting a like on something, then go and change how you're doing it. Don't talk about that anymore. I, um, the other day I posted about a personality test and I had like nothing on it. Well, you better believe I'm not going to be posting a personality quiz ever again, or at least it's going to be a while before I do that because my audience didn't like that. They didn't care. They said, who cares? Just like Sophia on our slide. So there's that. And um, let me stop our share. Oops. Let's see. There we go. Um, I have talked to... I talked to Val a few weeks ago and she kind of scrolled through some of our team's page and she said, you know, one thing that I notice when I look at your team pages or your... your uh, their profiles is that I don't know who they are when I look at their page. I don't see anything that sets them apart from every other coach out there. And, you know, she was talking about my page as well. She was including me as well. She said, you know, when I look at their banners on their page, I don't see anything that tells me who they are. When I read their first few posts, I don't see anything that tells them who, tells me who they are. I don't know anything about them. 
I know that they work out. I know that they drink a shake and I know that they eat healthy, but I don't know anything about their personality. And that's one thing that I really want us to focus on this month because when it is extra slow, and when we do have to work a little bit harder, we're going to make our jobs easier if we are sharing our story and we're setting ourselves apart. So I hope that those tips were helpful. I hope that you found something that you can put into action and take part in and apply to your page. I would love for all of us to join together and critique each other's pages. I know that that's scary and sometimes constructive criticism is not easy to take, but any time that I've had someone go and look at my page, all it has done is made my post stronger, and it's made my traction higher, and it's attracted those challengers that I want, that I needed, and I wanted to help. And those are the challengers who then get the best results because they felt my my vibe attracted them, and then they you know got me the referrals. And it, we you know it, my the number of people that I have helped have expanded because I had someone go and say, "This is you need more of this, you need less of this, you need to improve your pictures here." And it's all just constructive criticism. It's never a nitpicking like I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to tell you how bad you suck. I cannot believe you posted that. It's really coming from a place of just wanting to help each other. So um, if that's something that you would like, let me know and I'll match you up with a partner. I would love to hear about my page. I'm always looking for constructive criticism on that as well. And um, I just feel like that will help build us as a team and make us, our post stronger and attract the people that we are going to get to help the last three months. I'm really excited about this holiday season. I think I, I see really big things coming for our team. I love the momentum that we're building and I'm excited to see how we're going to end the year. So thank you for your time tonight. We'll be back next Tuesday at eight o'clock and I'm excited to hear about your short stories this coming up week and the rest of the year. Have a great night.